All right, and welcome to this episode number 20. And um, so yeah, I've gotten a lot of your comments that uh, I should make a new video because there's have been a lot of new features added. And actually it hasn't. The uh, EV is pretty feature set at the current moment. Um, the features we see are mostly for the interface and also um, the workbench engine, which I'm going to cover in this episode. So this episode I'm just going to talk more a bit um, about the current state of 2.8. And uh, <laughs> it looks like I'm super tiny behind a huge computer, but it's actually just I moved my computer on top of the desktop. Uh, I'm going to buy a new table and um, do the setup a little bit different. But if you haven't seen it, uh, it was a video where I bought a Xeon processor, processor on from eBay. In that whole uh, um, turn, I um, I bought a new chassis and stuff like that. So, um, but anyways, let's jump into Blender, and I'm just gonna make a new scene. So, what I mean with EV, EV has the feature set almost done. It's like all this feature we have uh, here. Uh, I'm super happy with them. I've seen somebody suggest that we that there should be more um, like hardcore solution for reflection probes and stuff like that, um, but I don't really see the need for 2.8. Um, maybe in the future, 2.81 or something. Um, Clement himself told in uh, a video on um, developers, uh, Blender developers on YouTube, uh, that the only thing he's gonna work on EV or the next thing is going to be a better depth of field because I guess the current depth of field is uh, um, taken from 2.79 and that you can probably write something that's faster and stuff like that especially for the viewport and uh, then uh, when you render it's going to render in higher quality depth of field so yeah so w what's actually new that's the workbench engine. So that's pretty cool. We got a new engine. And uh, it's probably just a scaled down EV. But uh, that's really okay with me. Um, I'm guessing that um, you have this like foundation for EV. And uh, EV has a higher feature set. And then you can scale it down and just use the basic stuff. To make something like the workbench engine. Um, and you change it over here. Uh, I'm just gonna flip this to the top. I haven't seen how you make this uh, header transparent, but I actually saw it in uh, Pablo's video that he had it transparent. And that would be something I will look into. So I'm using my own team, which is just a bit, um, uh, a bit, um, a bit of tweaked uh, version of the default one so I'm probably gonna try and keep it updated uh, during 2.8 until uh, yeah it's released so but I would really like to have this uh, transparent uh, another thing we see here is all these rounded corners that separate uh, the view areas from each other which is kinda nice I really like them uh, Another thing that you immediately see is also that the header becomes uh, transparent white with the um, uh, operator information, which I really like. I don't mind it actually because uh, your it's called modal or whatever when it's uh, you can't do anything else while uh, while you're doing the operator. So, uh, but yeah, the workbench engine. We got a couple of things here. I'm gonna open uh, a better scene. To illustrate it so let's switch to the workbench engine flip this to the top I'm probably gonna make this default I haven't done it yet just yet uh, so first of all single color uh, actually Pablo has a video about this which is really good uh, he goes through everything pretty thoroughly 
but I really like the flat shading and the random colors and stuff like that but we also have textures so I'm just gonna make this area a bit bigger and go into the node editor and whatever data block you have selected is the one you see in the viewport and I guess that's okay I, I, um, I mean it's, it's okay but um, if you have a large scene as uh, uh, Pablo had you could see that there was a lot of mixture sometimes you saw the diffuse uh, color texture or the albedo and uh, sometimes you saw the normal map and um, that's the only thing I would like to maybe add is that if you're in texture that you could switch between like see all normals on all diffuse and stuff like that but I'm guessing it's uh, sometimes you don't have a diffuse texture you just run uh, uh, RGB uh, color input but in that uh, it could pr it's basically the same when it's sampling uh, an albedo it's just sampling the uh, pixels from the textures map to the object and if you're running uh, if I do like this if I disconnect this one oh, okay ah oh, it doesn't matter uh, yeah currently it doesn't matter if I disconnect it it's still this one is the active one but if you plug in uh, just a RGB value um, uh, like a orange then it should be orange that, that could be handy so you can check all the like the normal maps all the albedos all the speculars and metallics and stuff like that but yeah it's uh, really nice actually and I really like the flat shading we finally have uh, unlit uh, shading which is amazing so especially if you're in uh, oh I think yeah if you're in edit mode I can uh, really see the benefit of flat shading because uh, then you can focus on the uh, edge flows and topologies uh, compared to if you're in uh, like say uh, what sorry material is the one I wanted I guess uh, anyway when it's uh, shaded it's a bit harder to see the why am oh okay studio lighting seems that seems like it got stuck so now you have uh, everything is shaded and um, a bit it's a bit harder to focus on the topology i would i'm probably going to use single color a lot and uh, flat lighting at least when i hard surface model so yeah so uh, let's switch back to Eevee and uh, render, just hide all the overlays. Okay, it's kind of, yeah, I don't know, what... oh yeah, I'm stupid. I disconnected that, um, uh, the albedo texture probably. No, I did not. Huh. Oh, anyways, just do it like uh, we can. We can. I don't need that one anymore. I just wanted to show you the textured mode. Um, but regarding properties panel, we have something new here. So let's go into workbench. So we have this uh, setting for the workspace add-ons, which is really nice. So if we imagine now I was doing rigging, I would probably have like a rigging workspace uh, in one of these tabs and then I could um, enable all the add-ons I only need for rigging. So if we duplicate the current one, you can see now, um, now it's using all the add-ons and uh, I can override and just use some of them. Let's say uh, pie menu so I can still go like this but and when I switch back to my other workspace you can see I have a lot of other add-ons enabled so that's really cool that was something I was hoping for and uh, to finally see it it's gonna be probably 
a much easier time working in Blender, uh, especially if you sometimes do animations and sometimes you you do asset creation for your uh, a game engine and stuff like that, then you probably want to have a specific workplace with a specific engine, which isn't currently implemented or working. So let's say you have EV for material and uh, texture look dev and yeah, you just want to tweak the materials and make sure your character looks good and probably is gonna look good in the game also. But then you have another workspace for uh, like hard surface modeling, sculpting and stuff like that. It would be really nice if you could choose a workbench engine, uh, a workspace, sorry, workspace engine for that workspace and then when you flip back to another one uh, it's it's stuck between the ones you selected so but maybe that's coming hopefully it's coming um yeah otherwise than that i really like this rounded corner it kind of helps you divide the space and uh, if we check the user preference really quickly you can have all these um, settings for the roundness of stuff uh, but I would really like to have one setting for the roundness uh, of these windows and maybe also um, a division setting or steps. So now it's pretty much rounded, but it would be nice if you could set the divisions to like two and then you only have like a sharp edge. Uh, not this rounded or more organic, but like, yeah, that would be really good. cool. Um, yeah, but as I said, I'm probably gonna check into my uh, team setting and fix it. Um, so yeah, this is really nice. I would like actually to have another one of these in the property panels. Uh, one for warnings. So you can have the little warning sim icon maybe and over here you get all the warnings. Because currently you have to get the info panel like this so whenever your whenever blender is throwing an error you get this like little warning um, icon in the header which is actually gone um, and uh, there's a concatenated string there so you, you can kind of see what error you got but um, it has a timer so it goes away after like one or two seconds and then I usually switch to this info panel and just uh, check what error was thrown from the add-on or Blender itself. Uh, but if we if that's gone, if this is the default layout, maybe it would be cool to have a warning property tab where you can uh, where all the add-ons and Blender itself can throw the warnings in some kind of list like this, so you can uh, expand them and read. Uh, like the entire warning message you can check them to remove them if you're if you're gonna try and fix the problem and there could also be like a yeah a lifetime so after one minute or something it's they go away by themselves and uh, that could also actually be really workful for when you're making texture painting and uh, forget to save the this data block is just on the in the RAM so you have to save it on the disk, uh, and sometimes you forget to do it, uh, but uh, you can actually see your model texture and stuff like that. So in the warning, there could also be like, uh, yeah, you have this uh, untitled uh, texture data block, which is not saved to disk, do you want to do it? And you could probably do it from the warning itself, like, yeah, save to disk and you get the, you get this one, and just save it somewhere. <clears throat> that could be really cool. Um, Unreal has something similar when you close it, uh, you get this like uh, um, array of uh, warnings and uh, you can try and solve them before you close uh, the application. So yeah, that would be really nice. Otherwise the workbench doesn't have that many features. Uh, I'm gonna try and make these windows opaque as soon as possible. I haven't found them in the uh, user preference just yet, but uh, I kind of like my menus to be more like this uh, opaque because it doesn't matter what's behind them. Uh, I would rather be able to read this uh, 
correctly. And uh, I actually noticed one thing. We can we can show you. So I have been working with 2.79 a lot um, recently, and I'm actually going to work later today on a client project. And when I switch from 2.79 to 2.8. Um, one thing I noticed is that uh, I'm just playing around with it. I'm not doing actual work, but uh, yeah, sculpting is really fast now. The viewport is uh, super fast also. Let's just cast this to a sphere again and subdivide a lot, but it's still uh, really fast. And you have this uh, threaded sculpt and uh, I checked it out. I didn't really see uh, all my cores being used. Maybe it's uh, waiting to really get implemented. But um, yeah, it was, or maybe it's so fast that it was just using like 1% on each core and I couldn't really see it in the graphs. Um, but what I would like, what I noticed with this new menu is that I was sculpting for like 15 minutes and my hands got really tired with the Wacom pen because uh, to change some of these you have to click and hold down and as soon as you release it collapses the menu so you have to click and hold down to select and uh, I'm guessing this is not going to be that big of a problem for me when it's released because I have my own uh, pie menus to change brush brushes but my suggestion for the developers is probably looking to maybe have some drop down menu up here so when you have it like this, uh, by default you can have all the like um, factory setting brushes, but as soon as you start making your own, you can have um, your own set of brushes, and you could have a, a, a drop down menu to switch between the like the defaults and the ones you made or the ones you downloaded. Because I can easily see myself having uh, a couple of sets actually, like for stylized or realistics or rocks or whatever because these kind of got tedious to click and hold down to switch between them and when I'm using the stylized ones I don't really want to have uh, the factory settings those brushes always have the hotkey so if you need them you can just press the hotkey and get them and you can also change with uh, the numbers but yeah some way of uh, uh, selecting which kind of uh, brush set you want to use would be great and also to see your custom icons you can't do it now but I, I'm guessing it's gonna work in the future because uh, somewhere here yeah custom icon you can actually that setting was in this uh, toolbar panel before but um, it's all, all up here now, so yeah, that works for me, I, I don't mind. I'm probably going to use a pie menu anyway. Um, yeah, so that was a bit rant about um, the workspace, uh, workbench engine, engine and uh, like in general the user interface, what I've seen so far. I'm probably going to keep my eyes open as soon as there's an update. I'm going to make a new, another video and uh, try it out and see what wh what stuff I like. Um, but yeah, currently as uh, Clement said, the next feature is gonna be the depth of field. All this other stuff is actually not even related. It's uh, yeah, the user interface and a lot of other stuff. But those updates, you can watch the developer videos from Blender on on YouTube. They go through it pretty thoroughly and have all the background information. I just <laughs> report whatever I see. But uh, I'm, um, yeah, probably next episode is also going to be about the workbench engine as soon as soon as there are any updates. I can show you one thing that uh, Pablo already showed, which was kind of cool: the armature. So let's switch to workbench so we don't have 
any distractions. Flip the top. I think you have to be in pose mode. So you can have transparent bones. That was kind of nice. So you... Or, yeah, you can see them through each, each other. And But maybe this is some kind of indication how we're going to see the the wireframes drawn in uh, when you're editing, editing a mesh or uh, be in wireframe mode. This kind of looks great, I think. Um, and if you don't know this, uh, when you select stuff in Blender, it's just an array and the latest stuff, um, the latest selection is the active selection. So sometimes when you apply stuff, it happens only to the active selection which is the latest one and here you can actually see yeah it's a bit brighter but if I deselect this one has a it looks like it has um thicker outline or th thicker line than all the other ones so that's kind of nice I don't mind that one o or that feature it's kind of nice to see whatever you had selected lastly has a bit of a different uh, wire overlay but yeah everything looks good so far I'm really looking forward to the all the new stuff added to workbench engine it's nice to finally see the textures I would like to see a bit more options oh one more thing I can jump back to blender before we go is that in in this top uh, or the header I think there, it would be a good idea to have some kind of uh, uh, pin tool here as you we used to have I guess it's gone now but we used to have in these um, in the toolbar and the properties we used to have a pin icon so you could pin one panel that's always in place and I would like to see something like this for all these options and probably all these menus uh, I don't know if it's uh, maybe it takes up a, a too much uh, space, but it would be nice to have them there, especially for these ones which you kind of want to turn on and off. Um, so, and what would happen if you like pin, uh, let's say, show uh, 3D cursor? Probably you're just gonna turn it off, but something else that you want to like kind of toggle on and off. Uh, if you were able to pin it, it could go on uh, a second row here, maybe. Um, I don't know if it's uh, useful, but I saw it in Unreal and it's they had a good use case when you want to show and hide armatures. They have a lot of other stuff that's uh, easier to do in Blender. But uh, yeah, maybe it would be nice to be able to go to solid uh, flat lightning with just one click. If you pin it, tick, and then you can go back to like let's say texture mode or uh, studio lighting. That could be nice. Random colors would be also cool to toggle on and off without um, without having to go into these menus and change. Especially if you let's say if you are in uh, uh, textured. But you want to toggle uh, random colors and have solid mode. You could have your pin menu down here and just click it, and it goes directly there without digging in the menus. It was it would just make it faster. But if they don't implement it, I'm probably gonna have it in a pie menu. So yeah, th uh, those are the uh, thoughts and idea I, I have about the workbench engine engine. Um, Whatever they do, it's going to be probably awesome. Uh, Blender 2.8 is shaping up to look really good, and I can't, I can't wait until it's, uh, yeah, SIGGRAPH in August or whenever they're going to have a first version working. They're probably going to work with it within a week or something, they say. They're going to move the studio, and probably then we're going to see a lot of um, uh, stuff getting tested and sorted. But it looks really good so far. So yeah, 
probably next episode is also going to be about the workbench engine since uh, Eevee isn't adding that much fe features. I'm hoping for more performance as usually, but uh, all the stuff I've seen so far is great. Um, yeah, that's probably it. If you if you want to see something more specific, just leave a comment. Um, so far, all the comments been like there's been a lot of more features, but they haven't been really EV related. But yeah, leave whatever comment you want, and I can look into it the next time I have uh, time to make a video. But now I have to go and start working. So happy blending. Goodbye.